Item number SCP-5767, Security Level 2, Containment Class, Neutralized. Special Containment Procedures, the remains of SCP-5767's shell and terrarium are to be kept in a secure item locker in Sector 4 of Site-52. SCP-5767's shell must be kept in a small clear plastic case that is airtight to prevent natural atmospheric degradation. Previous special containment procedures ended 19th of November 2019. A terrarium 5 meters by 4 meters by 3 meters replicating a typical garden landscape is to be allocated as living quarters for SCP-5767. The terrarium should have 70 to 80 percent humidity and the features will be altered upon the entity's request. SCP-5767 is allowed to freely roam its designated living quarters. A clear tubing system that encompasses Sector 4 of Site-52 has been created in order for the entity to observe sections of the facility if it wishes. SCP-5767 may freely roam this tubing network except in a site lockdown where it should be positioned inside of its terrarium until further notice. One researcher with a PhD in entomology is to be stationed nearby to maintain upkeep of the enclosure and monitor SCP-5767's general well-being. Daily, a small cup of assorted fruits and vegetables should be placed inside a terrarium with cucumbers being added on Fridays. One armed guard is to be placed outside the room housing the entity's terrarium if someone is visiting the containment area. All requests by SCP-5767 must have approval from at least two Level 3 researchers. It is to be supplied with a weekly magazine about up-to-date scientific findings and information, as well as requested SCP document, though viewing of documents must first be approved by site management. Description SCP-5767 is a sentient garden land snail that is slightly larger than regular specimen, being approximately 7 centimeters long and 3 centimeters tall. It is capable of mental communication with sapient humanoids and is theorized to be able to have two-way conversation with some intelligent animal life. SCP-5767 has been observed making mental connections with up to three subjects at a time and is extremely cooperative with researchers. The entity's voice has been described as having a southeastern British accent and having a calming tone of voice similar to an elderly human male. SCP-5767's voice has been observed becoming quieter as a person moves further away from the entity and becoming greater in volume in close distances. The primary physical difference between SCP-5767 and a normal garden snail is a small grey beard growing from the entity's medulla. Note, a mollusk's lower jaw or chin that has reached a maximum length of 3 centimeters, but SCP-5767 prefers to keep it a length of 1 centimeter. All other physical features in anatomy are non-anomalous. SCP-5767 claims it is extremely old, being able to recount in detail multiple historic events it has been present for. In addition, it is able to tell a near-complete recount of the Foundation's history, saying it has watched from a safe distance, and it commends the Foundation for maintaining its secrecy for so long. The entity states it has spent numerous years in Cambridge, England, observing university classes. It expresses interest in science, history, and human psychology. In addition to this, it says it has traveled the world and visited many important locations including foundation sites. Note from Researcher Smith, Thank goodness he got this little guy under our custody. He has intimate knowledge of about 50 anomalies. He could have a serious breach of secrecy if it wanted to tell someone prior to its containment. Disruption class upgraded from dark to Kanak.
Note, now neutralized. The entity is allowed to be visited by any staff with level 2 clearance or higher, as long as a guard is present. Subjects wishing to interact with SCP-5767 are encouraged to bring fresh vegetables to the enclosure on visits. Though cucumbers are generally discouraged, they will make us no greedy and may cause the entity to not eat anything but cucumber. Lettuce, tomatoes, and mushrooms are some of the entity's favorites. The following is a list of four formal requests made by SCP-5767 as of the 22nd of February, 2020. One visit from Agent Carter, accepted. One bowl of fruits and vegetables, accepted. Feeding routine is now in place. More moss and terrarium, accepted. One extra slice of cucumber, accepted. One rub on the shell, accepted. One extra slice of cucumber, denied. One newspaper magazine relating to scientific studies, accepted. Entity is now supplied with a weekly edition of National Geographic magazine and approved SCP documents. Recovery. SCP-5767 was discovered on the 2nd of May, 2006 by Agent Carter in Cambridge, England during an off-duty walk along the River Cam. The agent recalls turning a corner and being contacted by SCP-5767. The entity supposedly requested to be brought into the Foundation's custody and had been attempting to communicate with Agent Carter for days prior to recovery. Agent Carter does not recall being spoken to by SCP-5657 before this event. Upon discovery, the entity was brought back to Site-68 without incident. Temporary containment was secured following minor examination and a brief interview. See Interview Log 5767-1. After four weeks of observations, the entity was transferred to Site-52 for long-term containment. Interview Log 5767-1 Interviewed SCP-5767 Interviewer Researcher Smith Forward This interview was conducted three hours after initial recovery. After confirming SCP-5767's sentient nature. Begin log. Hello. I'm down here, sir. Researcher Smith leans over the table to view SCP-5767 seated on a chair on the opposite side. What kind of circus are we running here? Put it in front of me. Research assistants pick up SCP-5767 and place it on the table. Thank you for the assistance, but I am perfectly capable of moving myself. How are you today, sir? I'm... okay. Are you able to give a brief list of your anomalous qualities, please? From my study of my species, my only abnormalities are my ability to speak with you, a longer life, and an increased mental capacity, not to toot my own horn, as they say. Are you at all related to, or aware of, SCP-1867, Lord Theodore Thomas Blackwood? It doesn't ring a bell, sorry. Very well. And what make you seek out Agent Carter and Foundation custody? I have watched your Foundation grow in the shadows since they took expunge. On top of my other expeditions, I must say I find your work extremely interesting. I have traveled the world three times over and have seen everything I wish to see and thought that you might have to study me or put me to some sort of use in my old age. Thank you for the cooperation. You should be given temporary housing soon. This concludes the interview. End log. Following this interview, SCP-5767 requested to speak with Agent Carter, the man who recovered the entity. The request was accepted by site management, and the conversation can be found in Interview Log 5767-2. Interview Log 5767-2. Interviewed. SCP-5767. Interviewer. Agent Carter. 
This interview was requested by SCP-5767 following interview log 5767-1 under the premise that it wanted a chat. Begin log. Hi. Ah, I'm glad to see you, Carter. How are you? I'm doing all right, I guess. How are you? <laughs> I'm just fine. Thank you for bringing me in. I look forward to our future work. Do you mean with me specifically, or the Foundation? Either, I suppose. I've watched this group's actions for a number of years, and am excited to learn from you all. I'm not sure if we allowed access to our document, if that's what you mean. The guys up top aren't very trusting of things they don't understand, and I'll see what I can do. That's quite okay. Thank you, Carter. You're welcome. Uh, do you need anything else? No, that's okay. Silence for 35 seconds. Sorry if I seem a bit quiet. I've seen so many odd things here, but never thought I'd be talking to a snail. I understand. Hurry along. I'm sure you have something else to do. Agent Carter leaves the room. End log. After four weeks of observation, the entity was transferred to Site-52 for long-term containment. Addendum 5767-1 On beep 2011, Agent Carter was reassigned to Site-52 for an unrelated mission. During the agent's stay, he ran into SCP-5767. The pair were talking for about four hours before Agent Carter was summoned to deal with another anomaly. The following is a note from Agent Carter after the conversation. That was one of the best conversations I have had with anyone in years. He isn't lying when he says he has traveled the world. He's full of stories that could keep you talking for hours. I think it would make a great consular for anyone who needed it. I'm leaving to go back to England tomorrow, and I'm really going to miss him, to be honest. Following this, the ability to freely visit SCP-5767 was granted to all personnel with level 2 clearance or above. Agent Carter filed a request to be permanently relocated to Site-52. This request was accepted by Site Management. Containment Update, 14th of July, 2012. A clear tubing system has been implemented in Sector 4 of Site-52 that allows SCP-5767 to observe some of the actions carried out by our personnel. The system runs along the upper right-hand corner of all main corridors, with additional viewing including staff rooms, research department, and five safe class anomalies. SCP-5767 would like all staff in Sector 7 to know it is incredibly thankful for this privilege. Note from Agent Carter on 23rd of September, 2012. It's been a real privilege to be able to call this guy my friend. I've never met a human like him. He just has such a peaceful way about him. All my troubles drift away when I speak with him. He says I remind him of himself. I don't really see it. He is a snail, after all. But I trust him. He's become a mentor, like a grandfather to me. Since my own grandfather passed away, SCP-5657 has filled the gap. I've also noticed that staff morale has gone up on Sector 4 since they can see him in his tubes and can freely visit SCP-5767. Hopefully, we'll find more like him. A few other sites could benefit from something similar. Incident Log 5767-1 On Beep 2016 Site-52 experienced a mass containment breach caused by SCP Beep that resulted in 140 casualties. When an instance of SCP Beep entered Sector 4, Agent Carter was in the path of the entity. Agent Carter was subsequently terminated and was discovered after lockdown was lifted. SCP-5767 did not eat or speak to personnel for three months following the incident, despite attempts to encourage it to do so. Visits were suspended during this time. Note from Senior Researcher Brown, 
SCP-5767 has gradually begun becoming its normal self once again. We understand that this event is very traumatic for the entity, and we discourage staff from speaking about it to SCP-5767. Hopefully, in time, it will begin its former love for conversation. Update. As of the 11th of June, 2017, the entity has resumed its normal routine, appears to be doing just fine for now. In its progressive aging, SCP-5767 has begun to deteriorate in its health. Though it continues to provide support for others, it is believed SCP-5767 may expire in the near future. Addendum 5767-2 On the 19th of November, 2020, SCP-5767 quietly passed away in its sleep. The entity's death was attributed to natural causes of old aging. SCP-5767 has been particularly lethargic for days prior to this, so staff did not recover its body for one day after it is thought to have expired. Its remains were already decomposing, so they were allowed to decompose completely before the shell was recovered. It is believed SCP-5767 was one of a kind, but a search for other potential instances is ongoing. SCP-5767 never requested a companion or mate, so it is believed it never produced offspring. The staff of Site-52 expressed their sorrow at this loss.